Okay, so good day. Today is uh, Yom Hamishi, Thursday, the 22nd of Shvat. Before telling you about Rabbi Tursky's family a bit, today is the Rebbe Tzanchai Abushka's yard site, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's wife's yard site. So, L'schus, we'll learn the Schus her Shama, and uh, maybe we'll even hop a rein later, a story or a vort. But uh, going back to Tversky, well, all I can tell you is what I saw. I, yesterday, when I was Menachem Movel, the family, there were three sons in the room and one brother. He has two brothers that are left. One is Aaron and one's Michal. Michal is the, the one who the, took over the, the, the shul and the uh, rabbinate yes. kind of, who comes to Bet Shemesh. That's the one from, from, from Milwaukee, Rabbi Michal Tversky. And the other one is uh, Aaron, who was, maybe still is, a professor of law at Hofstra University in Queens, I believe in Queens. And then, so I, he was there, and he's, you know, looks like an old, he is an older man, and, you know, uh, getting older, it looks like, you know, his voice is raspy and low. Um, and then the, there were three sons. There's one, one is called Ben Sion. Tversky, he is a uh, either a psychologist or a social worker. Very, very popular in the Frum community here. There's in Borough Park. I think I spoke to him once. Then there is um, another one named, I think, Aaron, I think. And I spoke... A, a son named Aaron. Aaron. He lives in He's what? He lives in Far Rockaway. Oh, lives in Far Rockaway. In Far Rockaway. Okay, and I, I spoke... Law as... No, no. That Aaron is the brother. Is a brother. I'm talking about a son. A son. Anyway, a son named Aaron, he was there, and, and I spoke to him. I don't... I guess he lives in Borough Park. I don't know. Um, and there's another... the son, Yitz, Yitzchak, I think, another son. I saw them all. I went. I went to the women's, uh, the kitchen. The women were there, and I asked if there were any daughters. They said no. There were no daughters there. So I, I think he has daughters, you know. But I don't know where where they are in their Yisrael or elsewhere. I don't know. You know, that's so. I saw three out of uh, how many children does he have? Nine, ten children. I, you know, that's what I saw. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think he has that many children. Uh huh. I don't know. Okay. I don't know, but they're all, they're, you know, they're all, um, not all, actually, two of them wore the long kaftan, the long frock. One of the brothers did not, he wore a short jacket, and he looked, you know, he had a beard and everything, full beard, but um, he looked more of a, he, you know, not as Hasidic, you know, um, mm-hmm. yeah. as the other two. Um, but they, they all, it's funny, I was listening to their Yiddish, Two of them spoke Yiddish, and you can hear it's an American Yiddish. I speak, my Yiddish is ten times better than their Yiddish, and I'm also an American, but I grew up here in Brooklyn with Holocaust parents, and Yiddish was the, our first tongue. I don't know, you know, you know, Rabbi Tversky and his wife, I, I don't know if they spoke Yiddish at home, I really don't know. But uh, it's noticeable that their kids that grew up in Milwaukee, because their, their, their Yiddish is... You know, I'm not going to say it's terrible, but uh, anyone that knows Yiddish well picks up that they're American speaking Yiddish. Then the third, the third son, the one I described, he was a little, you know, a little, a little, little, little more chilled. You know, he spoke in English. Um, a very uh, distinguished Rav came in, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef Halberstam was a shul nearby here, and he came in, and and, and everyone was listening to him because he goes back with Rabbi Tversky uh, to the forties. And maybe earlier, I don't know. So, so um, I could hear. So, when, when the third son spoke to him, he spoke in English. He didn't even attempt to speak in Yiddish. He spoke in English. So um, now you know that Rabbi Tversky's mother was the Baba Rebbe's sister, right? Rabbi, the Baba Rebbe who 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 founded Baba in America, Rabbi Shlomo Halberstam. His sister was Rabbi Tversky's father's wife, you know, his mother. So, so there's a picture, 
There's a, a picture of them sitting, you know, at different simchas. You see the Baba Rebbe on one side, his father on the other, other side. I think that's the picture of his wedding. Another another uh, thing uh, that that just of interest is that um, I found it very interesting that the people that came to be Menachem Oval, when I was there for the half hour, were all Babaver and they weren't Skver or Chernobler. I think that the, the Babaver world is more forgiving and understanding of him going to college. You see, when he went to college and his brothers, it was a, 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 a big, big uh, issue. It, it upset many people. I mean, it was like, because, you know, here, are, here is, you know, uh, a, a rabbinic, a rebbeshev family with very bright people and educate, you know, and everything. And uh, instead of sitting and learning and becoming, you know, massive Rosh Hashivas, they, they, they went to college. Except, I think every brother went to college except Mich- Michal, the one that's in Milwaukee. Every other brother, I think there was four or five brothers, five brothers. You know, and it, so it was the talk of town. And the, the square world and the Chernobyl world never forgave them for that. Like when I mention his name in the shul here in square that I daven in sometimes, they, they, they make, you know, offhand comments, you know. But in Baviv, I was able to hear from this relative yesterday who's a very serious man, Talmud Chochem, Achsid Shayid, in his 80s, you know, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef Halberstam, and he was explaining what, what Tversky told him about college, and he he he, he uh, agreed with it. He said that the issue of, you know, this was Tversky's opinion. The issue of becoming not religious and, and because of different philosophies, he says that was never their concern. Because you know they're they're they're, they're mamin and they're from Yidden. The concern was taruvas, mixture of men and women, boys and girls. And he told over the story that Tversky told him he's sitting in college three and a half weeks. And a woman comes over to him who sat nearby, a non-Jewish lady, and she says, my gosh, it's been three and a half weeks. You're so unsocial. You didn't say hello. So he looks up at her and he says, hello, madam. (laughs) It's very nice that you came by, but guess what? It's going to be this way the rest of the time. I don't speak to women. This is what the rabbi uh, Halberstam repeated that Rabbi Tversky told him years ago, and he brought he brought out the Nakuda that he was pushed sitting there as as a from Yidna Chassid, and you know he, that's it. You know you can call me on on social. And he was married, he was married with kids already. Oh, that's another Nakuda that he brought out. But so what I saw, what I walked away with from that encounter yesterday was interesting. That the above of her, they were above of, are you know, more open. And, 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 it, and it makes sense because the Baba of Hasidus is like a chilled Hasidus. You know what I'm saying? It's very proper and, you know, live and let live and just, you know what I'm saying? So um, it was interesting. Okay, let's get to the mimer. <laughs> Rebbe, yes. Okay, I told you the story. I told you guys the story, right, with the Baba of Rebbe and my grandfather, right? I told you the story. Yes, you did. You did. I told you she was... Uh, so, so I, I tell you, there's another story. You were talking about the Tversky brothers. So, so I'm, I'm out and about. So I'm, that's why I'm listening to the shir. But I'm, I, I'm out and about today. I'm not home. Um, so what happened was is that the hundred shiva Rebbe, where, where you are in Brooklyn, right? The hundred shiva. So that's that's his brother, Abraham's brother. Right. Right. The hundred. Right. So the hundred shiva Rebbe. There was a kiddush. My cousin made a kiddush maybe 10, 15 years ago. He got a baby boy. And it was a Shabbos brisk. So I went to this, to, to the Hagrid, which I was in America at the time. And um, I was living in Israel, but I went to the shul. I went to, and after shul, after the Kiddush, I went over to the Rebbe. And, he, you know, of course, he gives everybody a hug. So he gave me a hug. So then I, said, I told him, I said that I'm Tanachim Levine's uh, grandson-in-law. He gave me another hug. And then he says to me, he goes, you know, what happened to him? What's going on with him? I haven't seen him. Apparently they were very, very close friends, and they were cousins. That, I knew that they were cousins, but I didn't know that they were very close friends. But apparently they were very, very close. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, you know, in the 40s, everyone was to get, you know, such a little crowd of from people. People knew each other from me. And especially in the 50s, you know, Lubavitches and, and Bavar lived in Crown Heights. Anyway, let's get, we're on page okay. 195. 
Um, the Kitzer to the last paragraph. Yevayer da guf gadol da elam, the large body of of the world, meaning the the micro the, the, the macrocosm, is is refined through the microcosm through man. Hamavin no who understands and feels mechayes nafshei of his vitality of his chayes. Bechayus elikisha ba'elam. He 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 sees how Hashem animates the world, and in a specific way, and he relates to that. Vuhu and this type of animation we call in Hasidus, Eir hamemala kol almen, the light, the energy that pervades the world. Vivoyer da guf nechlak l'reish guf edego. We also explained that the body is divided into three compartments: the head. The body and the feet, the yisur haregel and the advantage of the feet, hamaymid harosh umakbihoy, which erects the head, um and and lifts it up and makes it go higher. The farish and with this we explain the pasuk in Baloischa, ragli ha'om asher anoichi bekirboy, the feet of of the nation makes anoichi and the Rebbe brought the tight shmuel anoichi is keser. When did Moshe receive the Ur HaKeser, the light known as the crown, the illumination from that exp- level? It's because of Ragli Ha'om. Asher Anoichi Bekir Boy. That cause, that Anoichi should be in, in me. Let's go. 196. Next paragraph. Vov. Hini Yomar The sages say, God la maise yeseh mina Greater is the action more than the one that does the action. Okay, do a betam as it's known, regarding those that support the data. They make it possible for the data to be, to exist through giving money for data. Someone who does an action for his friend, and he supports the students of data, those that learn data, that person is greater than the one who's actually doing the act. The ma'ase and the ose. The one who ma'ase is chaveri shi right? He's greater. And just as it is regarding the act of tzedakah for the purpose and benefit of those that study tzedakah, which is very exalted. In a kein, who melame believe with mamish the God lamai says chaveli l'toyra yisam aleimet biatzmei. Someone who makes it possible for someone else to learn Torah is greater than the actual person who's learning the Torah. Is this talking about Yisachar Zvon? Is that what he's referring to? Yisachar Zvon or something else? Yeah, that too, that too. But let's see how he develops it. The Rebbe says this is not Gmilas Chesed Begufai and Gmilas Chesed Bimamainai, right? You have two things. Like I said the other day, Avram was kind with exerting himself to, to bring in a Jew to do Achnas Zarchim. He also spent his own money by feeding them. And the third thing is Gmilas Chesed Benafshay, a spiritual, soulful like of Gmilas Chesed. Ukamai. When we set a shear for people to learn together, the type of study is based on the ability of the people who are in the shear. You learn halacha, or stories of the Talmud. The kviyazu, hirama v'nisa. The Rebbe says this type of study is very exalted, very special. listen, Ushma, and again listen, two different words to express listening. Yisrael Yid, and the rabbis say, Asu Kitos, they teach the word, make classes, Kitos, groups. The Isku and learn and involve yourself in Teira. She'ein ha-teira nithknis elo b'chabura. Teira will not be acquired unless you have a chabura, 
a group. One has to be a participant in this type of study. Even those that can learn a very in-depth type of learning, and they don't need this shear, they sit anyway and participate in the shear. And I saw this in my own eyes with Rabbi Reichel of Shalom in Berkeley. I saw it. Rabbi Yehuda Ferris, the Shliach in Berkeley, would teach between Mincha and Meirev. And, you know, the students, whoever the students, you know, something rel- relatively si- simple. And Rabbi Shmuel Dover, I saw myself, would sit down at the shear. And I saw it in Los Angeles, too. And trust me, <laughs> he, he didn't need the shear, okay? But there's such a thing, and, I, and my shver taught me this, too, that, you know, when there's a shear going on, you know, unless you have something else, you know, that you have to do, you should sit and participate in the shear. That's what the Rebbe says here. Surely someone who teaches people in the public, great is his reward, and it exalts his soul. The great schus for someone to teach other people, a shir barabim, is a great, great schus for the soul. Balimud, the Rebbe, so, and so, so that for sure, Moshe is Kmilus Chesed Nefesh. You're doing a kindness by by spiritual giving spiritual sustenance to people, teaching them. But also Elagam Hayistatfus Balimud, those that participate in the Shir who in Yigmilus Chasodim Benafshay, it's a Gmilus Chesed. Because I told you, like the Rebbe says, he doesn't have to be there. He knows the, the, the material, but he participates because he wants to be part of the group. Keep what about a chavrusa? How a, chavru, a chavrusa is not berabim. We're not here. We're talking about the schus of limut Torah berabim. A chavrusa is important, no question about it. But we're talking, and, and 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 also, you're right. I, I remind me, you remind me when I was in in in, in base medrash. You know, you know, I came to my principal. He was a survivor and a, a, a chassid and a, a, a very talmud chacham. And I said, you know, all my life I've been, you know, having chavrusas teaching others. I want to learn with someone who's either on my level in, in learning and knowledge or so, or more. And I, you know, I want to learn at that type of a level. You know, I remember what he told me. He says, I'm telling you. Because he wanted me to learn with a boy from Italy who just, you know, didn't know that much. He says, you will get so much more if you learn with him. And I listened. And it was true. So, but at this, it, it's a gemilus chesed. It's a gemilus chesed ben nafshe. So there is, there is that thing, Yoni, of a gemilus chesed ben nafshe when it comes to, to chavrusa. But here we're talking about the advantage of berabim, a sheer berabim. Let's continue. Okay, th- thanks for the clarification. Yeah. And the Rebbe kind of addresses your point. The fact that you support people who who, who are learning Berabim, who Tamchen Daraisa, you're credited to be called a supporter of the Torah. And the Rebbe says, you know what he says? That the schus of being a supporter of Torah is greater when you support a sheer berabim of simple people who are not big talmid chachamim, and you make it possible for them to learn together halacha hagoda whatever it is. The Rebbe says your credit is greater. Why? Because since they know less, and you're bringing them to the table all together, it's a tremendous tamchin daraisa of the greatest kind. That's what he says. Just as it's explained regarding self-sacrifice, that simpletons, simple people, have more mesiras nefesh than the big intellectuals. Right? Because the big intellectuals, with all their intellect, it's hard for them to jump in. The simpletons, they don't have just... Just make them aware that it's Mesir Nefesh and they jump in. Hashem calls them moving the Maile Horegel who Maile Gedoyle. This emphasizes and expresses that the virtue of the feet is greater, is, 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 is who Maile Gedoyle is a very great virtue. The Oemis who came, and the truth is this way. 
Avo mikol makoy, nevertheless, be oir v'chayis pnimi. When we talk about an inner vitality, shemeslabish baguf, that invests itself in the body, hinechelo koyim tsoyi, the middle part of the body, shenikre chelik aguf, right? You have the head, which is the top, the feet, which is the bottom, and the middle, which is called the guf. There's more observable vitality in the body than in the feet. If you give a kick your chest, it hurts much more than the, the foot and, and the regal. Why? Because the middle part, the body, what we call the body, it has the heart. And all the inner limbs, right? Um, everything that's inside. Oh, there is, I think, a halacha too that the the the, the, the puncturing of, in the, of the heart and the inner limbs is bemashuhu, an iota drop. The outer, other parts, the, uh, the, the halacha is it doesn't invalidate, a puncture doesn't invalidate the behema for shchita. But when it comes to a puncture in the heart or one of the inner limbs, even a drop of a puncture is already an invalidation. The whole chayis odem toli bezet, and all of man's vitality depends on that. God forbid, if there's a hole in the heart, we know the the seriousness. If there's a puncture in the foot, it, you're not you're not dying. You're not uh, critical. But in the heart or the lungs, like we have now Islam with the COVID situation, we see what's going on. Conversely, when it comes to the foot, what is the foot consist of? Only levad, walking. Those boots are made for walking. Just walk all over you. Why? Because the regel is the last koyach of the nefesh as it's expressed in the foot. Bahamidois, the emotions which are in the heart, heim nailim har are more, are greater. The harei afilu ha yodayim, he said, the Rebbe says, take the hands. Sheheim gam kein ra koyach atnu vad. What are the hands? They are only an expression of movement. So you would think that the hands don't have this intense chayas like the, like the rest of the body, but it's similar to the feet. Says the Rebbe, no. The hands are more, are greater than the feet in this sense. Why? The beregel who rakzirikas With the foot, you just shove and move pebbles, stones as you walk. The koyach zayesh legamba balchai. This is a shared koyach with an animal, as an animal walks. Mashenkin conversely, the koyach atlush of yad, the movement in the hand. Hu meleches haksiva, we write with it. Shehem imaise adam, which is considered of man's actions. It's demonstrative of man and not animal. The chem imleches atziyo, Moshe's field, art. Art is done with the hand, and it's demonstrative of man. An animal can't draw, can't write. Although art, painting, drawing is all done with the koyach with the hands, the action, which is the lowest kind of power of the nefesh, action orientation. Avo, who apnimi is the koyach So we have two things. We have the externality of koyach and we have the inner, the pnimias of koyach In other words, in art, it's not just movement of the hand. It's talented movement of the hand. It's, that's what we, it's pnimias. Yonison. In other words, there's certain koyach where you could be, excuse the expression, like a behemoth. And you can do like a behemoth. You walk in the street and the snow outside, you push aside the snow and you walk further. Right? But when it comes to drawing to art, that won't help you because you, you'll be a failure. You have to apply your talent or, or, or develop your talent. 
So it's koyach hamaisa, it's the movement of the hand, but the movement is associated with a pneumius. It's coming from the brain. Yes, yes, you understand. You understand, we don't hear you. Yeah, when you, when you train yourself to life, you take the chastanyot of a chokhmah and it goes down into the head. Correct. That's what we're saying. Okay. So since the Rebbe mentions here that there's Pneumius and Kitsainius, he now develops that a little bit. Every single power, every single Koyach, Har Yeshboi Pneumius Hachitsainius. There is the Pneumius Vichitsainius, the inner and the outer. Next page, 197. And the outer aspect of action of the power of Maisa, it is walking and throwing. Avo, haksiva, but writing, vahatsir, and drawing, that is the inner aspect of Maisa. The idea is with the gam bezrika, even in throwing. Afilu bezrika muchovenes, even when a pitcher throws the ball in its particular way, it's called zrika muchovenes. Kamoi kolea el asara, kolea asara means he gets it exactly on the the target. He hits the target. V'lo yachta is a posik. Kolea asara v'lo yachta. He hits the target and he doesn't sin. Shehu mibnei haseichu. What? Right, right, right. Velo yechter. Thank you. Yeah. He hits it. Shmuel. Yechter means sin and it also means lacking, missing. So here the pasuk means kolea el asaira. He 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 throw. He hits the target exactly. Velo yechter and he doesn't miss the target. Why? Shehu mibnei haseichu v'imun yodayim shebezeh. It's because the seichu, the intellect, leads it. This is what Yonis was saying before. It's coming from seichu. V'imun yodayim. Imun means like the training of the hands shebezeh. So Moshe's stroke, when he makes the painting, is coming from a seichu that trains the hands to draw in a certain way. So it's an art and a talent. Not just he woke up in the morning and God gifted him, but he trained himself. Yes, he trained himself somehow to use that part of the seichel to express itself in the, in, in the brush, in the art. Nevertheless, the Rebbe says, when it comes to zrika, throwing something with the hands, the main thing is the action, the maisa. In other words, in order to hit your target, right? Let's say a golfer, I'm just saying, to hit the, 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 the ball, the, the, the thing to go into the hole, that's an art. Yeah, but, but the Rebbe says the ikin is the maisa. You've got to give a good swing and a stark swing so that it goes so far towards the hole. So the Iker, what's, what's primarily felt in this act? It's the action. True, you, you assess how far and how much Koyach you need, but what's primary, he says, is the Maiser. Let's see, let's see further before. The and the proof is, the Rebbe says, the proof to my argument is, the Bichleis Koychoi Neifol Hanizrik Betivoi. As soon as the Koyach, that you put into the throw ends noiful hanizrak the item that was thrown we call that the nizrak falls betivoy gravity so in other words when you throw you're doing something against gravity and as long as that koya hamaisa of yours is there it's going to fly. 
As soon as the Koyach HaMaisa that you put into the throw ends, it reverts back to its very self, which is what? Which is your, which is your, 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 your natural, uh, gravity goes back. So what do we see? The previous Rebbe says, what do we see? What is the entire uh, uh, structure that's happening when you throw something? It's the Koyach HaMaisa that's emphasized. Conversely, Avil Betzior, Moshe, you didn't know you're getting a, a, a lesson, a, a lesson in art this morning. Avil Betzior, with the Fried Kerebbe, you never know. <laughs> Before, always new things come up. Avil Betzior, when it comes to art, which also is with the stroke of the brush, in the Milvad Zeshu Levushel Asechu. In addition to the fact that it is a garment, it is a, a, a vessel for the mind, the intellect, who says, I want to draw a man with a hat on top of a bridge. So you have to think of the bridge and the man, the seichel, and then you progress to draw it, right? So the, the, the drawing is based on the seichel, Right? Nevertheless, he needs a shayikir who is gabrus a seichel al koyach. In art, he says, in siur, there it's not, the emphasis is not the act, the actual drawing. The emphasis is the idea. We call that the his gabrus, the overpowering of ha of the intellect al koyach. So, in other words, one second, one, one, one second. Give me a, a, one second, then I'll let you. You can be, you can have a talent. We say you have a talent. You have a talent for drawing. The Rebbe is saying here, talent ahin, talent ahead. See this expression. Whether you have a talent, you don't have a talent. If your seichel doesn't dominate and control the the stroke of the of the of the brush, it's not going to be as nice. As it could be, this gabru saseichu is what's primary. So what the Rebbe is doing here, here, Chavre, is making a difference between two types of action. One is one is called the throwing of the hand, and one is called the drawing with the hand. And he's saying that in the koyach of the hand, when you throw something, you see that what's emphasized is the koach, the ma'aser. The proof is, as soon as the koach ends, it reverts back, gravity falls down. That, that's not seichel. So, in other words, even though I want to kolea el asaira, he brings the posik, hitting the target. So you have to aim, right? You have to aim very well. Where is the target? What do I need to get to the target? Nevertheless, how do you get to the target to koach hamaisa, through putting a lot of effort into that throw in a focused way to get to the target. So the highlighting, the emphasis is the koyach ha-maisim, what we call earlier the chitsoinius, the external, the exterior. Whereas in koyach ha-tsiur, in, the, in the art, there the emphasis is not the chitsoinius, but the pnimius, i.e. the seichol. Because if you draw because you're talented, but there's no seichel there, you're going to have a hodgeplash. And maybe today that's where a lot, a lot of artists hodgeplash. And they decide they make a name of it, and it's worth a million bucks, and you have to buy it. And you say, what is this? Ech. But, but let's, get back, let's get back to the point. His gabrus ha seichel al hakoach. The overpowering of the of the of the seichel over the koyach. That's the emphasis in seer. Let's continue. Oh, I'm sorry, Yoini, you want to say something? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, what I understand is is that there's a difference between the uh, an artist is creativity, and and throwing a ball, it's uh, Michael Jordan's athleticism. So he's talking about how it's much how it's much more chashiv the chashivus 
is on the creative on the creativity level rather than on the athletic level. That that that's I, I like the way you put it. I, I think that's a that's that's a that's a good way, excellent way. There's more crea- there's more crea- on the there's more hashivas on the cre- creativity versus the um, behavior. Uh, he doesn't use the word hashivas. He used the word chitzono suprimius, but I, it's the same idea. In other words, this touches Yoni. The, uh, in seer, in art, in drawing, it touches the inner aspect of soul. And, it, and, and in the other one, it touches the external aspect. Now, by the way, he's not belittling, and he's not telling, you know, Le Havdel or Michael Jordan or someone else, uh, you know, these athleticism, it needs training too, right? But what's emphasized there is the mice. Yes, Moshe? I just want to make a distinct distinction. Um, and I, I, cause you, the way that you're describing what the photograph is saying is an artist who is developing his own ideas and compositions and thoughts. And I'm curious, I know that I was from, from experience, there's also a very significant, there's a difference between when an artist does that as opposed to when an artist draws or paints from direct observation. In other words, he goes, he paints what he sees with his eyes. He sees a landscape. He sees a still life of flowers. And that is a, is a tremendous, tremendous, um, it takes a tremendous talent, a development of talent to achieve what's called, in the art world, it's called a likeness. Like, for example, just a likeness means that you draw or paint something and when it, the, and the viewer sees it, they recognize the item immediately because the artist was able to capture what item or the person actually looks like. I'm just making a distinction. But I'm just saying that I'm curious what the Friedrich Rebbe would say about that because I'm just saying from my own experience, it's, it's, that's a, it's a trem- it requires a tremendous amount of effort and development of, of, uh, and so-, so forth. Also, it's interesting he writes Siva because when I write... Like I was just writing now before the shear. When you write, the there is a tremendous, tremendous uh, focus that you have to do on the craft of the writing. But it's, it's much deeper than that. The, the the strokes, the minuscule strokes, the movements you have to make with your fingers and your hands to achieve very good results. It's it's very intense. Uh huh. Right. So, so you're saying the intensity is guided by the seichel. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 You you have to you have to be there. You have to access that seichel. You you have to really really give it all you got. You got to focus and focus. Uh huh. It's not okay. It's not like you know. You know well, it's it's not like, it. Yeah. No. I'm just saying it's it's not like you know. You, it's like. You know, a person works in, I don't know, something he's just, oh, I need to send that fax. So he just goes over and he, you know, presses a few buttons or whether he puts, he, it, it is not a tremendous, he doesn't have to put everything he's got into sending a fax. Right, but, right. But when you're writing, you're writing something, you're writing film, mezuzah, secret Torah, et cetera, Megillah, you have to give it all you got. I understand. I hear you. No, I, I, I hear very good. I'm, I'm uh, regarding what you said earlier, I have to think about it. I, I don't know enough about it. And uh, it, let me let me just finish the my, the paragraph. What the one last point is just yeah. this moment, the, the issue is the 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 eye, my the eye, mind, hand coordination between those three elements of a person. And I'm just so so I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Right. When you think about it, you know, it's just, it's I mind and coordination. Okay. I I mind and hand coordination. Hand co- and hand coordination. Okay. All all three obviously have to work together. Right. Right. And they're governed by the seichel. Okay. Yeah. Let me just finish. For the chain ikira yoyfi b'tziur, the primary beauty of art who atoichin hametsuyer. It's the content. <laughs> it's what the message of the picture, Shmuel, that is the beauty, not the actual seer. 
He says, if you really want to talk about Yoifi, about beauty, it's the message that this particular art expresses. And this is the Pneumius of Koyach And it's so true, right? What would you rather have, like, you know, from my books, a book covers, right? A regular picture or a descriptive picture? You know, you know, well, let's say I, I, I had a book on Satmer and Lubavitch, right? Shmuel knows about that. So, so I chose the bigger Choylem bus of the Satmer Hasidim, and I put it on the cover. Why? And it's not such a gewaldige picture, but it's a message that they're into bigger Choylem. And, I, and people who saw it, they said, ah, we got it. And then on Lubavitcher, I put a, a, a bocher putting, a, a, I think, putting on Tefillin with a policeman. What do I want to bring out? The contrast. The Lubavitch emphasizes putting on film with Yidin, and Satmar emphasizes giving food to Yidin. Both are Gvaldic, but it's a different approach. So that was the, you know, so it's the teichin of, of the pictures that really bring out what the picture is all about. Chevre, have a great Shabbos. It's the Rebetzin's yard site. Those who have Malichter ging an Eden, Rebetzin Mushke. And uh, Ben Rabbi Yosef Yitzchok, wow. and she 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 was um, a mainstay to our Rebbe, both in the beginning when she told him, you know, if you don't take the leadership and be the Rebbe, my fathers and grandfathers Hasidus will go down the tubes, you know. Who's and and she pushed the Rebbe to take the responsibility, even though he was <laughs> not interested in it, and he did it. And then again in 1985-86 with the Svarim, she she uh, said clearly to the to the lawyer and then to the judge that if not for my uh, he asked her so doesn't doesn't it all belong privately to you the, the books to your father and she said my father and and all of his belongings belong to Hasidim. He he is the he is the representation of Has, Chabad Hasidus and Hasidim, and that's who he was. He wasn't an individual who had his private bank accounts and his private houses and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And 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 this was a gewaldike line that the the judge saw that this is this is one of the key ideas that made that case go in favor of Lubavitch was her words. So, although she was a very modest and private person, you know, she didn't come to the Fabrengans. She, I, you know, she, we never saw her at Fabrengans. She didn't want to make a splash. If she came to Fabrengan, everyone would make a lot of room around, you know what I'm saying? Would be a, she, she was very modest, very private, very, very, I grew up, I never saw her, I never knew anything about her. Nothing. And not only me, all, me and my friends and the entire wow. Lubavitch community. Wow. Very much a, like you take, for example, the Rebbetz and Rivka, the previous Rebbe's mother, and even his wife, Rebbetz and Hamadina, you know, they were more active with the, the, the women's organization and supporting the Yeshiva Bacharim and, and, and making sure they had food and things like that. But um, Rebbetz and Chaya Mushka was very private, you know, so, um, but behind the scenes, every, uh, every uh, strong and special man has a special woman. Have a great Shabbos. See everyone Sunday. Rebbe, Rebbe, when is the art site? When's the art site? Today, today, today Chof Beis, today. Oh, okay. Chof I Beis. Uh, okay, I got a light of candle. Right, okay, Zayi Gazon. Good Shabbos, everyone. Bye-bye. Right,